peace and infinite grace to all of you out there. Thank you so much for joining my channel, for shining your light here and out in the world. We are here studying the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and today we're on lesson number 169, By Grace I Live, By Grace I Am Released. So yesterday we started getting into the idea of grace, and now we're going to dig deeper into it. So I pulled out the Ken Wapnick teaching manual, and I wanted to read a little bit about grace before we jump into the lesson to kind of set your mind and get ready for this teaching. And before I do that, I'll give you a little bit of Zena Allen attunement energy right there. Check that out on my, my matcha cup. Cheers. Okay, let's see what Ken has to say. And he also has a passage from the text here about grace. So listen into this before we dive into the lesson. Reflecting God's love, grace is its aspect in the dream and like its sister forgiveness does not oppose its source. In other words, grace is love's natural state once the separation seemed to occur the son's memory that allows him to choose his father instead of the ego. Grace is the natural state of every son of God. When he is not in a state of grace, he is out of his natural environment and does not function well. Everything he does becomes a strain because he was not created for the environment that he has made. And the lesson is going to delve deeper into that. But I love what he says here like it's sister forgiveness. So here's another word to add in. If you're not already using it, a lot of you already use grace in your lexicon, your spiritual lexicon. But uh, grace is the sister of forgiveness. A beautiful preamble to this lesson. All right, here we go. I'm going to grab the awesome blue book that, oh, by the way, is going to come with me to Costa Rica. I'm heading there for the third time this year. Yes, I feel like I've created such a wonderful life to have the opportunity to do that. I'm going down for a retreat with um, a women's group that I participated in last year. And this retreat center was so booked up last year that we had to come into this year to book it. So I will be there on the solstice, sending you love from paradise. All right, here we go. Lesson number 169, by grace I live, by grace I am released. Grace is an aspect of the love of God, which is most like the state prevailing in the unity of truth. It is the world's most lofty aspiration, for it leads beyond the world entirely. It is past learning, yet the goal of learning, for grace cannot come until the mind prepares itself for true acceptance. Grace becomes inevitable instantly in those who have prepared a table where it can be gently laid and willingly received, an altar clean and holy for the gift. Grace is acceptance of the love of God within a world seeming of hate and fear. By grace alone, the hate and fear are gone, for grace presents a state so opposite to everything the world contains that those whose minds are lighted by the gift of grace cannot believe the world of fear is real. Grace is not learned. The final step must go beyond all learning. Grace is not the goal this course aspires to attain, yet we prepare for grace in that an open mind can hear the call to waken. It is not shut tight against God's voice. It has become aware that there are things it does not know and thus is ready to accept a state completely different from experience with which is familiarly at home. We have perhaps adhered, appeared to contradict our statement that the revelation of the Father and the Son as one has been already set. But we have also said the mind determines when the time will be and has determined it. And yet we urge you to bear witness to the word of God to hasten the experience of truth and speed its advent into every mind that recognizes truth effects on you. So I love that paragraph because it's getting into this idea that we are ministers and we're out in the world with our brothers and sisters shining this light that we may not even be aware of how bright it is, how strong it is, how loving it feels. 
but that's that's what's happening as these lessons really get into our consciousness and start radiating outward you'll see if you haven't already oneness is simply the idea god is and in his being he encompasses all things <clears throat> no mind holds anything but him we say god is and then we cease to speak for in that knowledge words are meaningless there are no lips to speak them and no part of mind distinct to feel that it is now aware of something not itself it has united with its source and like its source itself it merely is we cannot speak nor write nor even think of this at all it comes to every mind when total recognition that its will is God's has been completely given and received. Completely. <laughs> it returns the mind into the endless present where the past and future cannot be conceived. It lies beyond salvation, past all thought of time, forgiveness and the holy face of Christ. The Son of God has merely disappeared into his Father as his Father has in him. The world has never been at all. Eternity remains a constant state. <clears throat> this is beyond experience we try to hasten. Yet forgiveness taught and learned brings with it the experiences which bear witness that the time the mind itself determined to abandon all but this is now at hand. We do not hasten it in that what you will offer was concealed from him who teaches what forgiveness means. All learning has, was already in his mind, accomplished and complete. He recognized all that time holds and gave it to all minds that each one might determine from a point where time was ended when it is released to revelation and eternity. We have repeated several times before that you but make a journey that is done. For oneness must be here. Whatever time the mind has set for revelation is entirely irrelevant to what must be a constant state, forever as it always was, forever to remain as it is now. We merely take the part assigned long since and fully recognized as perfectly fulfilled by him who wrote salvation's script in his creator's name and in the name of his creator's son. There is no need to further clarify what no one in the world can understand. When revelation of your oneness comes, it will be known and fully understood. Now we have work to do, for those in time can speak of things beyond and listen to words which explain what is to come is past already. Yet what meaning can the words convey to those who count the hours still, rise and work, and go to sleep by them? So I think this is telling us, these last two paragraphs here, is that we have become lighthouses in a sense where we're carrying however these teachings have alchemized in our being out into the world where we relate with our brothers and sisters who may or may not have awareness of these teachings and things are going to start to happen both within our brothers and sisters and within us the more that that these teachings absorb into our consciousness and remove the untrue beliefs and correct a lot of the incorrect thinking that we have so Yet what meaning can the words convey to those who count the hours still and rise and work and go to sleep by them? It's just folks who have not wake, woken up yet. They're still in the grind thinking that's what's going to give them, bring them happiness and joy. And all the things that we know now, after being this far into the course, we can seek through our spiritual practice only. The world offers us a lot of good things, great things, enjoyable, pleasurable things, but it's not salvation. And when we come into this state of grace, we just simply know that and we emanate that truth to people who are still confused and thinking that they can find their path to salvation somehow here in their uh, workaday life. All right, suffice it then that you have work to do to play your part. The ending must remain obscure to you until your part is done. Oh, darn. Thanks, Jesus. It does not matter, for your part is still what all the rest depends on. As you take the role assigned to you, salvation comes a little nearer, each uncertain heart that does not beat as yet in tune with God. Oh, I just love that. Your heart beats in tune with God. I love it. The more you wake up, 
the more your heart beats in tune with God. Forgiveness is the central theme that runs throughout salvation, holding all its parts in meaningful relationships, the course it runs directed, and its outcome sure. And now we ask for grace, the final gift salvation can bestow. Experience that grace provides will end in time, for grace foreshadows heaven, yet does not replace the thought of time, but for a little while. The interval suffices. It is here miracles are laid to be returned by you from holy instance you receive through grace in your experience to all who see the light that lingers in your face. What is the face of Christ but his who went a moment into timelessness and brought a clear reflection of the unity he felt an instant back to bless the world? And I would say that sentence there describes near-death experiences. Those who pass through the veil, have a little taste of what it's like, and then come back. How could you finally attain it forever while a part of you remains outside, unknowing, unawakened, and in need of you as witness to the truth? And that just simply means you can't stay in heaven because you still have work to do here, both on your consciousness and whatever your role is in the collective consciousness. So I get it. We can't be too excited to die, our bodies to die, because we have work to do. Be grateful to return, as you were glad to go an instant and accept the gifts that grace provided you. You carry them back to yourself, and revelation stands not far behind. Its coming is ensured. We ask for grace and for experience that comes from grace. We welcome the release it offers everyone. We do not ask for the unaskable. We do not look beyond what grace can give. For this we can give in the grace that has been given us. Our learning goal today does not exceed this prayer. Yet in the world, what could be more than what we ask? This day of him who gives us grace as we ask, as it was given him. By grace I live, by grace I am released. By grace I give, by grace I will release. Beautiful, beautiful teaching today. By grace I live, by grace I am released. Have a wonderful day experiencing this lesson, and I will see you back here again, not here in this room, in another country. I'll be somewhere tomorrow making a video, and I will enjoy wherever I'm at, and I'll try to share all that energy with you so that you're feeling it too. Have a beautiful day, lots of love to you, and I'll see you next time.